Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Shelby. If you're new here, hello. I do photography videos, video tutorial videos, all that kind of stuff, and some lifestyle stuff, sometimes hauls, fashion videos, all that. Today I'm basically doing everything you need to know when you get started with photography. These are things that you pretty much can't get by without knowing if you want to shoot in manual, which you do you wanna do that. I know you might think, auto looks pretty good though. The auto settings on my camera, you know, I'm getting some nice shots. They can look pretty good, but you're not gonna have any control over which shot looked good for what reason. You wanna be able to shoot in manual so that you can control your shot and actually replicate a shot that you like, or if you have an idea in your head of what you want something to look like, you can actually make that happen. So we're basically gonna go over the manual settings that you'll wanna use for photography, but they're pretty much the same for video with the addition of frame rate. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. I will have more information on Squarespace at the end of this video. So there are three things with photography that you're gonna wanna focus on if you're shooting in manual, and that is aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. When you're starting out, these things might be a little bit confusing and take some time to set, so it might be tempting to just switch to auto, but stick with it because you'll get to a point where I pick up a camera, I don't even really think about it. It's kind of like muscle memory and I just have it set. And I'm like, whoa, I don't, I like blacked out. How did that happen? But my camera's good to go. You'll get to a point where it's super easy and it takes seconds to set your camera. It's really no problem. So when I'm setting a camera in manual, the first thing that I focus on is the aperture. So the aperture controls how much light is let in. You can physically see it if you move your camera and you look at the lens, you can see it opening up. One thing that can confuse people about aperture at first is that the lower the number is, the more light you're letting in. So that is a little bit counterintuitive. A lot of people will think that the higher number would let more light in. So if you start to think that, remind yourself that it's the opposite of what you would intuitively think. That's what I used to do. So you might be like, okay, that's cool, but I don't really care how much light's being let in. Like who really cares? Why does it matter? Well, it's actually really important. A lot of photography is just controlling how you use light. So the lower your aperture, so if you're at F1.2 or even F2 is still pretty low. So that's more light being let in. The more shallow your depth of field will be. So right now we're shooting at 2.8. If I come close to the camera like this, I'm out of focus. If I go far away, I'm out of focus. If I was shooting at F22, I could go almost anywhere and still kind of be in focus. But the nice thing about that is we have this beautiful blurry background. Like it just looks really nice. So if you want that shallow depth of field, that really kind of blurred out background, you're gonna wanna go with a lower aperture to let more light in. If you wanna get everything in focus, so if you're shooting a landscape, you're probably gonna wanna get everything in focus. The higher you would set your aperture, cause that's gonna get everything in focus, but you won't get that blurred out background look at all. So generally for the blurred out background thing, that's great for interviews, for portrait photos, even just anything where you just wanna focus on one person and the background doesn't really matter. The next thing I will set after the aperture is the shutter speed. So generally, if you're doing video, you're gonna want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate, which we'll talk about in the end. But usually that's gonna be somewhere between like 50 and 200, probably not any more than that. So that's kind of like optimal settings, but there are times when that doesn't really work. With photography, you're gonna get a little bit of motion motion blur when you have the shutter speed lower. So if you're shooting at 1 60th and someone is running, they're gonna be super blurry. Like it's not really gonna look very good. There are situations where it looks cool though. Like if you're shooting traffic moving, that's how you get that cool shot where it's just lights and not really cars. So let's say you're shooting outside. It's really, really bright out. Your aperture is really open because you want a shallow depth of field. Well, you're gonna have to set your shutter speed to like 2000 to compensate for that. So I pretty much use shutter speed to compensate and make it kind of work with what I set the aperture to. So generally, you're just gonna wanna adjust the shutter speed so that you're not overexposing your shot. Other situations might be you're shooting inside and it's kind of dark. You're probably actually gonna have your shutter speed be a lot lower of a number just to compensate for the lack of light. So the more light, probably the higher your shutter speed will be and the less light, probably the lower your shutter speed will be. With video, you really can't go lower than the frame rate that you're shooting at. So you can't go lower than like 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. But in most cases, you actually want to bump up the shutter speed around like one two hundredth of a second. That's if you're shooting sports, if you're shooting people who are moving around. So then you're not really going to get so much motion blur because the shutter is just 
It's super quick. And the last thing that you're gonna set if you're shooting in manual is your ISO. So with ISO, I generally like to keep it as low as I possibly can because as your ISO goes up, you're generally gonna lose quality. It's gonna get a little bit grainy, maybe a little bit pixelated, or not really pixelated, but it loses pixels and tries to fill them in digitally, and it just doesn't look as good. I will say though, a lot of cameras now do a great job at this digital ISO. Sony cameras, they can shoot to like 200,000 ISO, it's crazy. You can really use ISO as a tool when you need a little bit of like digitally enhanced light that you're not getting. So if you're shooting inside and you need a little more light, you can bump up your ISO a little bit, but for most cameras, I wouldn't even go above 2000. A lot of cheaper cameras like really aren't even gonna look good above 800 ISO. The camera I'm shooting on now can shoot at like 10,000 ISO and still look pretty good. But the thing you really wanna take away here is that you kind of want to keep it low. Like I like to shoot at 100 ISO most of the time. If I'm shooting outside, I'm going to shoot at 100 ISO most likely. Another thing to note, and things can get a little bit more complicated here, so don't worry if this doesn't make sense. Each camera has a native ISO, so you can easily Google this to see what your camera's native ISO is. But for Canon cameras, so what I'm using here, the native ISO is 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1600. And when you're setting the ISO, you can kind of tell because on Canon cameras they make the native ones like slightly longer of a dash and then the ones in between are kind of shorter so that's an easy way to know which ones are the native ISO so the numbers between these are digitally enhanced let's say we're shooting between the native ISOs 200 and 400 let's say we're shooting 300 you're actually gonna be shooting at 200 and then it digitally enhances it to 300 the weird thing with this is you're gonna lose a little bit more pixels and have it slightly slightly more grainy than if you just shot an ISO 400 because 400 is a native ISO. So this is where it gets kind of weird when I said that generally you want to keep it lower. In some circumstances, you might want to just bring it to the native ISO if you can, and it's going to be a little bit better quality. But honestly, this kind of thing is like super nitpicky and you most people like won't even notice. But if you do want to be shooting in the best quality that you can, try and stick to the native ISO. And the last thing that I'm going to touch on is frame rate. So so this is not really a photography thing, it's just for video, but it's pretty simple actually. There's a few frame rates that pretty much every camera has. That's gonna be 24 and 30. Sometimes 24 will be called 23.98 for this thing called drop frame time code. You probably won't even have to deal with unless you're editing for TV. You can shoot in 23.98 and 24, and if you're making YouTube videos, it's fine. Like there's not really a huge difference there. So 24 and 30 are generally what you wanna be shooting on. These are gonna be sharper than if you're shooting in 60 frames and I find that 24 is just slightly sharper than if you're shooting in 30. 30 was meant for like broadcast TV, 24 was meant more for film. They're just different looks. It's kind of subjective. Some people like 30 better. I think 24 is a little bit better but it's up to you. And then there's 60 frames which you'll see some YouTubers shooting in all the time and it looks kind of weird. It's sort of hyper realistic and I don't really like the look of it. The main use of it is if you're wanting to slow something down. Let's say you're shooting sports, so you want to have like a slow motion montage. You actually have to shoot double the frames to be able to slow that down and not have it be choppy. If you don't shoot in double the frames, it's not going to be smooth. It's going to look like... Like, I'll show an example. I'll slow this down. Just me being like... Just me like moving my arms. I'll slow this down. You'll see it's kind of choppy. If you shoot in a higher frame rate though, you won't have this problem. It'll be nice and smooth. That is why you would shoot in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second or even higher. A lot of cameras can go pretty high. Even your iPhone can go to what, like 240? It's crazy. So those are the basics of shooting photography and shooting video. I pretty much just tried to condense down like a photography 101 class to a 10 minute video, so hopefully you got that. If you have any other questions though, comment down below and I'll try and answer them. Like I said, they might be a little bit confusing at first, but in no time, it'll be muscle memory to you and you'll just be like, doo, 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 and your camera will be good to go. And now a word from our sponsor. No, but seriously, I mentioned Squarespace at the beginning of this video, sponsored this video, and now I'll tell you guys a little more information about them. Squarespace is basically the go-to if you need a website. They just have beautiful templates that make it super easy to set up a website. My guess, if you're watching this video, is that you're either a photographer or you want to be a photographer. This is gonna be your go 
go-to site for setting up your photography portfolio. You can get your domain name and your website in the same place, and then you don't have to do any coding or anything like that. You can upload all of your photos and have your information, and it just makes it very easy, very quick and simple for you to set up a photography gallery, or if you wanna set up an online store, any of that stuff. If you're setting up an online store, they have stuff so that you can control your inventory, look at your sales, all of that too, so it's really cool. I love Squarespace, I use it. I'm currently using it actually for a project that I can't totally tell you guys about yet, but you'll see soon. I really love Squarespace because the templates are so aesthetically pleasing. They take all the work out of finding fonts and like even just spacing things, just little things you don't think about. The design that makes a huge difference on how professional you're gonna look. I will have a code below for 10% off. If you guys wanna check it out, you can go to squarespace.com slash Shelby. That'll get you 10% off when you wanna purchase your domain or website. But in the meantime, you can just go do a free trial, test it out, just go to squarespace.com and you can start setting up your website for free. So that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. I will try and answer them down below. I hope that you enjoyed. Even though I know this video is like kind of a little bit more boring because it was just so informative, but hopefully it helped. That's it for today and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!